names. My name is Faith Ottery, and I am the co-founder of the PGSGA PT Global Platform and co-creator of the PGSGA, or the Patient Generated Subjective Global Assessment. I'm very pleased to be here. And if you look at the next slide, what we're going to do is address a quick overview of the critical aspects of the PGSGA that are important for you to determine whether this is an appropriate instrument to use in your clinical practice or in your research. The SCORED PGSGA is used internationally as the reference method for a number of components in a four-in-one instrument. Proactive risk assessment or screening, nutritional assessment, interventional triage, and outcomes monitoring. The tool helps streamline and focus the clinical process and allows the time that you spend with the patient to optimize the quality of the interaction. The tool is patient-centric and basically empowers the patient to do the time-consuming aspects by themselves rather than by the carer. The tool empowers patients, caregivers, and professionals, and across a number of different um, research studies has been shown to consistently show high sensitivity and specificity. It's predictive of both adverse and improved clinical outcomes, and importantly, it's easy to use with simple but adequate training. The reference you see at the bottom of the slide has just come out in May of 2017 and addresses information, new research that's occurred in the last 18 months and gives you a very good overview of things. For those of you who have not previously seen the PGSGA, this is actually the first four boxes, the patient-generated aspect, and is also known as the PGSGA short form. The PGSG has two components, this patient version and another one, the professional aspect that we'll talk about in a few minutes. Box one addresses chronic and intermediate and acute weight loss or weight change. Box two changes in amount, type, and consistency of food intake. Box three, symptoms, impediments that negatively influence food intake, absorption, and utilization in nutrients. And box four, activities and functions based on the ECOG or Eastern Cooperative Oncology Group performance status, but converted to layman's terms. The PGSJ short form has been valid, validated as an independent screening tool. One of the important overriding components of anything that we're doing in terms of having an impact on nutritional status, body composition, etc., is really an interdisciplinary and multimodality approach. This includes addressing the nutritional milieu of the patient, exercise or activity, looking at the hormonal milieu of the patients, whether they're on corticosteroids, whether they're hypogonadal, whether they're hypothyroid, etc. Anabolic competence is defined as that state which optimally supports protein synthesis and lean body mass, as well as global aspects of muscle and organ function, immune competence and quality of life. And importantly, as we're increasingly successful in our terms of our interventions, quality of survivorship. I want you to like take a look, and you can stop this video if you'd like, these three patients that could walk into your clinic tomorrow or be in one of your clinical trials next week. If we use the PGSGA short form, we can see that the patients at the two ends of the, of the group, patient one and patient three, have the highest scores. The higher the score, the higher the risk for nutritional deficit or development of malnutrition. We can think of the first and the third as catabolic and the one in the middle of anabolic. She's certainly lost a significant amount of weight, but she's turned the corner and is now doing better. In the triage of the PGSGA, a score of greater than nine, equal to or greater than nine points, is a critical need for nutritional and or pharmacologic intervention. This next one addresses our PT Global app or web tool. This is available in iOS, Android, Windows, as well as a web tool that can be used at a desktop computer. This is based on the original paper version of the PGSJ, including the most recent version in 2015. This is the professional component and basically addresses the worksheets. Worksheet 1 has instructions on scoring of percentage of weight loss for box 1 in the previous um, patient version. Worksheet 2 addresses conditions that may increase nutritional risk or requirements. Worksheet 3 addresses metabolic stress, for example, fever, how high and how long, and corticosteroids, the type and the dose. Worksheet 4 addresses scoring of muscle status, deficit, loss of muscle mass or tone, as well as fat stores and fluid status, 
all based on a nutrition-focused physical exam. Worksheet 5 is an overall patient global assessment categorization, optimizing the findings, or excuse me, utilizing the findings of box 1 through 4 that the patient generated, and which accounts for 90% of the score for most subjects, and the physical exam taken from Worksheet 4. The categories include Stage A, which is well-nourished or not undernourished, Stage B, which is moderately malnourished or suspected of having malnutrition, and Stage 3 is severely malnourished. The easy way of remembering is A is anabolic, C is catabolic, and B is that intergroup inter between. Importantly, the items of the professional component were developed as worksheets to provide and contain training and self-awareness in terms of the contributions to malnutrition that on a clinical practice may easily be overlooked, for example, fever and corticosteroids. The five worksheets are completed by the healthcare professional, which can include the dietitian, the nurse, physician, physiotherapist, or others involved in the patient clinical care. This is our app, our English version, our second Dutch version, our third Portuguese version, and this is a group that met in 2016 at Copenhagen um, and addressed a number of the different, up to 20 different language versions that are undergoing translation, back translation, linguistic validation, and cross-cultural adaptation. We hope that perhaps you'll join us at one of these upcoming meetings. Here's a copy of our PT Global website, www.pt-global.org, and includes a number of resources and also hyperlinks to a number of additional resources, such as our YouTube channel with additional um, videos of previous presentations. Harriet and myself greet you from the Hansa University in Groningen, the Netherlands. We hope that you will connect with us through a number of our social media aspects and we hope that this helps you in making your important decisions in terms of improving patient care through use of the PGSGA and its associated PT Global platform. Thank you.